It's kind of crazy to think about, but it's actually been close to a year since Total War Rover Master came out. Back then I enjoyed the game for what it was, a remaster of a Total War classic that I had a lot of nostalgia for, but made sure to mention its AI and UI shortcomings. A lot has happened in a year though, both in terms of patches and mod offerings, and if you've been following this channel, you've likely seen that I've covered a few of the biggest mods for the game that really expands what was possible at release. However, this is 2022. Rome Remastered, despite the greatness of old and the amazing mods, do carry objectively outdated game mechanics. This is where Rome 2 comes in. Rome 2 might have its issues, lacking mechanics and a bit of that old charm, but it also feels a lot better to play in terms of fluidity, controls, and visuals. That's why I thought it was time to see which of these games you should be playing right now, both if you're a beginner and if you're in the mood for some Total War fun taking place in antiquity, and we're leaving no stone unturned here, including campaigns, battles, and mods. And if that sounds good to you, I really hope you leave a like and a comment down below. And now, Rome Remastered vs Rome 2 in 2022. Rome Total War was my first ever Total War game, and I will forever cherish it. But for the past 5 to 10 years, this old gem paradoxically runs like ass on modern hardware. That's partially where Rome Remastered comes in. It runs infinitely better than the old game, brings back the same old feeling and vibe, and comes with updated visuals but sadly also the same faults related to AI and comes with a controversial revamped UI. Those are the highlights, but what does this mean for players in particular? Well, Rome Remastered offers that classic Total War campaign we know and love, and if you miss the old days, then look no further. If you want to play like it was 2004, you need to play one of the three Roman factions before unlocking every other playable faction in the game. This might seem like a weird ancient gaming era thing, but honestly, I really love this aspect. This means that Rome and Italy is what feels like home in this game, and journeying beyond these confines is mysterious and exciting. Unlocking the other factions means you'll have to defeat them in the campaign, which means that you're actually rewarded for playing long campaigns that take you all over the world. It feels like a kind of in-game achievement system with real rewards in a way, and to me, that's awesome. The campaign in Rome Remastered is virtually identical to the one in the original game, and that's a good thing. Every city is its own entity, and you're free to build whatever buildings you want in every town, be it walls, roads, or marketplaces. This means you get the freedom to build what you want where you want, without any restrictions other than money or population size. And that's the thing I really love about Rome Remastered. There is so much here that it's left up to the player. Want to have several armies not led by a general? Go for it. You can even have a captain win battles and become a great general through the man of the hour mechanic, which is completely missing from every newer title. Armies only come with one stance here, and you can't do forced marches or anything like that, but what you can do is build watchtowers to light up your vision of the map. Or what's even cooler is that you can erect permanent force to create a choke point across rivers or in mountains. I absolutely love this because however minor, it really feels like you're somehow shaping the map creating new points of strategy that can help you now or in the future. The original Rome is in many ways very simple. There are no real deep mechanics to pay attention to other than what's right here, and what I mean by that is that most things revolve around the city and the war machine. And yet, it's also deliciously great. Rome Remastered makes use of a population system in every city, meaning you have real numbers of people living in your empire and not just an abstract growth meter. The number of people in your city are influenced by the recruiting of units or their disbandment, and you will have to pay attention to how crops and temples influence further growth and happiness. Perhaps the most intricate mechanic Rome Remastered offers outside of empire building is the senate and mission system, which is essentially the only structure this game offers. Even then, the senate system, which has you vie for the love of the people and the senate before in the late game, march on Rome itself and declare yourself the one true Roman faction, is an exclusive Roman feature. Every other faction has no particular system, so it's a very free-flowing campaign. I personally like more mechanics and some structure though, but here you can make your own stories and not really have to do anything you don't want to. I love the look of Rome Remastered, as I find it comfortable to look at and easy to make out what's going on at any time. That's one of the perks of offering simpler graphics, I guess. On the campaign, the style is awesome, I'd say, and even though I think the original Rome still looks amazing, I've gotten used to and really like the visual updates here. What I will say is that the battle maps still look and feel quite outdated though, depending on what we're talking about. The units have gotten a solid visual upgrade luckily, but there's also the matter of how they move and how they play. You will definitely notice that this is an older title in terms of animations, which is probably my biggest gripe with this game honestly. Everything just feels kinda stiff, and you don't have as easy control of the camera as you do in later titles. Rome battles still play well though, and just like in 2004, 
it's a joy to duke it out on the battle maps that resemble the locations on the campaign map and spend time in cities that reflect what you've actually built yourself. The downside is that there are certain unit pathfinding issues that do remain especially in siege battles, and the AI is questionable even though that doesn't necessarily mean that battles are easy. When Rome Remastered came out, there was a lot of talk about the game's UI. Personally, I still think much of the UI design is a downgrade from the original, seeing as it seems like the screen space isn't used as well as in the original game, the icons are tiny and might be hard for new players to understand, for example. Luckily though, you can right-click them and have them expand drastically, and despite it all, I've come to like it quite well because I think it's snappy and smooth. That was the vanilla Rome Remastered experience, and I honestly think it's quite decent, especially since you're not only getting the massive original Grand Campaign, but also the savagely hard barbarian invasion campaign that pits a divided Roman Empire against barbarian hordes and Eastern Empires, and the Alexander campaign, which… yeah, malaka. My biggest issue with this remaster though, is that it doesn't offer a multiplayer campaign, which I feel would have been absolutely amazing for this game. It's a huge missed opportunity because this is perhaps the best running Total War game due to the simple graphics and mechanics, and would have been very easy to pick up and play with a friend or two. But then there's of course the matter of modding, and I wish to highlight two mods in particular here, that I find increase the enjoyment of the game further. First up is Rome Total Realism Imperium Surrectum, which focuses on bringing a massive amount of new units, cities, and factions to the game, but also which lately has begun adding new game mechanics, cultures, and religions. The second mod is Total Conquest, a mod that focuses on the campaign mechanics to make Rome even deeper. I love both of these mods, and if you tire of the same old vanilla experience, these mods are fantastic. There's even a medieval mod here named Chivalry, which is based on Medieval 1 rather than Medieval 2. In other words, there's quite a lot you get for the price of Rome Remastered then, and when I'm in the mood for a tad more classical style and simple yet exciting Total War experience, I love coming back to this era, the cinematic cutscenes for every faction, and the unforgettable music which is some of the best in the series, especially on the battle maps. And this means it's time for Rome 2. Forget that Rome 2 had a tight berth, that's almost a decade ago, and things are different now. Rome 2 is massive, still popular and hugely modernized compared to Rome Remastered. Rome 2 offers an absolutely massive campaign that stomps all over the first game in terms of scope and factions. The map is beautiful, especially with a few mods like the ones I'm using here which sharpens the game up a little. Whether the landscapes or the cities, Rome 2 looks beautiful even today, and really feels like you're in a large and deep ancient world here, stretching from Iberia in the west all the way to Afghanistan in the east. Total War changed a whole lot between Rome and Rome 2, and these changes do remain between Rome Remastered and Rome 2 as well. Perhaps the most obvious change is that Rome 2 is a lot more historically accurate this time, offering only one Roman faction instead of three. You can however choose between various families now that alter the experience depending on which perks you value the most, which is worth to consider before playing. One of Rome 2's biggest changes since last time is the new province system, which has a lot to say for how you actually build your empire. Cities now have slots which forces you to prioritize what to build where, taking away from the freedom of the original in an effort to force the player to make hard choices. In addition, every province now has one major city known as a province capital, and one or more smaller towns that often come with unique trade resources. Only the province capital comes with city walls though, so the towns are more prone to being attacked. An intuitive population has been replaced with a meteor showing us how far you are from your city expanding, which in turn is influenced by the buildings you have erected. Recruiting units have no impact on this growth, so there is in a sense less realism to think about here. There's also a food mechanic that along with money governs the upkeep of your units. As with less freedom related to towns, armies must now be led by generals in an effort to end the AI walking around with useless one unit armies. And even though you can't place down forts anymore, your army has several ways of moving now, either raiding an enemy territory for gold, using forced march to move even longer distances in a single turn, or indeed establish temporary fortifications wherever the army is located, but only until it moves again. Speaking of generals, Rome 2 offers a new general leveling system where you invest earned points from battle into a skill tree. This stands in contrast to Rome Remastered's system of a more dynamic general leveling system where the traits are rewarded after certain actions or events, so in a way, Rome 2's system is perhaps less realistic, but also a bit more reliable since you are in charge. The general theme in Rome 2 compared to Rome Remastered is perhaps that of restriction. Your expansion is now held back by an Imperium level, which determines how many armies and agents you can fill at any given time, and the same goes for edicts which are special province-wide bonuses you can only have so many of at any single time. Diplomacy is also a factor here, 
And while it remains largely similar between the two games, Roman Master is the only one that allows for the trading or demanding of cities, a feature completely absent from Rome 2. It's also impossible to move your capital around in Rome 2, while Rome Remastered allows for a change in your main city basically as often as you want. The same goes for the technology system. Instead of unlocking everything you need from buildings as in Rome Remastered, Rome 2 uses a series now staple tech system to unlock new buildings and upgrades, which is very similar to how other game series do it. One of the most important changes to pay attention to though is the government and family window. Even though there is no specific senate mechanic now, you still have to pay attention to politics. Each general belongs to a different family and political party, and in an effort to not fall into civil war, you really need to keep these political parties content with your rule. In a way then, Rome 2's campaign offers more micromanaging in many respects, but also restricts the player in more sense than one, also making use of more gamified mechanics instead of Rome Remastered's more realistic take on empire building. I particularly miss building roads and having an actual population as we do in Rome Remastered, and I do think the restrictions put on us through Imperium is rather arbitrary and not particularly fun. Other than that though, Rome 2's campaign is larger, more visually pleasing, and more modern feeling, and newcomers might just prefer this system over Rome Remastered's. Now onto the battle maps. This is perhaps the most contentious aspect of Rome 2. In many ways, Rome 2's battles are far superior to Rome Remastered's. For one, they're visually superior, with each soldier looking detailed and offering their own animations. Battles definitely do look a lot more realistic now, but they also feel a lot more modern, offering better camera movements and more modern control of units. This is a big point for me in terms of enjoyment, as a lot of steps have, despite everything, been made in terms of making things just feel better to play here. What does feel like regression though, is that, at least for me, the siege battles essentially allows normal units to burn down city gates by tossing torches. It kind of devalues siege equipment and makes things feel a bit more arcadey, because in Rome Remastered, if you're out of siege equipment, you're also out of luck if the walls have yet to be breached. There's also the matter of unit collision that somehow seems to work better in Rome Remastered, whereas units in Rome 2 can often feel a bit squashed together at times. The way the battles work will feel different for every player though, and while some might prefer Rome Remastered's more slow moving combat, others will love the more dynamic sense of Rome 2's battles. What Rome 2 has that Rome Remastered does not, however, are more than just two expansion packs. Here you'll get to play as Caesar in Gaul, fight Hannibal, control Octavian's Rome and help Aurelian unite a divided Rome or even help Rome survive its infancy. There are so many possible time periods to play here, and I think many of these expansions are a lot of fun. Onto the mods then, and I'd like to highlight one mod in particular which changes the entire experience for the better. I'm talking about DEI, the mod that makes Rome 2 more difficult and more personal by actually adding much of what the vanilla experience lacks namely population and supply systems, which somehow now manages to make the Rome 2 experience deeper than the Rome Remastered one. The AI also adds a number of new units and mechanics, including making the battles harder and slower, which makes every battle feel like a turning point in your campaign. If you're up for something else, there's a medieval mod here as well, and a whole army of larger and smaller mods, from campaigns to visual mods, and you're almost sure to find anything you'll need here. In essence then, Rome Remastered and Rome 2 offer vastly different experiences despite taking place in the same period and dealing with many of the same factions, units, and locations. Rome Remastered offers a somewhat simpler, but still detailed and meticulous experience, and since the visuals have been updated, it kind of feels more modern than it did in 2004 as well. Factor in the active modding scene, and you likely have new content for months and years here. Rome 2 on the other hand is larger and will feel a lot more modern to newcomers, but will likely be much more difficult to enter for those with less experience, as there's just more to think about here. There is less freedom here too though, with many restrictions put on the player, but what Rome 2 lacks in some of the original Rome's depth, it makes up for in its visual fidelity and in its best mod ever, DEI, which makes Rome 2 into what it always should have been. If I had to choose, I'd probably recommend Rome Remastered to newcomers because it's such a pure experience and awesome place to begin and gives you three campaigns for the price of one, but if you already have some experience from the other strategy games, Rome 2 is no bad place to start, especially if you want the added depth of DEI. The fact that Rome Remastered lacks a multiplayer campaign is a massive shame, so the fact that Rome 2 offers one is a big bonus here. Thank you so much for watching. I've had a lot of fun with either of the Romes, and because of the mods, both Rome Remastered and Rome 2 have so much to offer going into the future as well. Let me know what you think is the best Roman Total War to start with, and if you enjoyed the video, I really hope you leave a like, a comment, subscribe to the channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon, where every donation means the world to me. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.